Hey folks, welcome back to Only the Best Fantasy Novels. My name is Robin, and today I want to talk about the concluding volume of the Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu, Speaking Bones. So, this book was epic. Epic as epic gets. Essentially, it's the second half of the concluding volume. Like, in true epic fantasy style, Ken Lee wrote, wrote a book that was too big to be published in one shot. So we got the first half in The Veil Throne, which was a lot of setup, and it did read like a lot of setup. It was slow, it was more build up. And this book is essentially the climax of the entire series. Things, th things start to pop off pretty much as soon as the book opens and over the course of it we see a lot of things that have been uh, laid that, that were started way back in this series come to fruition essentially so what goes down in this book um, essentially the 10 year piece between the Liuku and the Dandelion Dynasty is about to come to a close and there's quite a lot of debate on both sides about how to proceed. Like the Darrens are seeing this as that uh, there, there's factions who want to take the war to the Liyuku, there's factions who want to coexist, there's factions who want to maintain the status quo. Um, and that's just on the Dandelion Dynasty side. On the Liyuku side, there are factions who they want to continue the subjugation, continue the bloodbath. They feel like they, their people are grow, going soft and they want to hold on to their warrior militaristic culture at the expense of the islands of Dara. Um, Empress Gia laid the foundation for some she she's been working in the shadows to lay the foundation for some very interesting things that begin to pop off in this book and I loved it honestly I I enjoyed it immensely at the same time she does face a lot of internal strife because she's now at the point where she should have long handed over the reins of power to Prince Fyro and he should be the emperor in name and that she she's not giving up power she's not giving up power and that by itself is a source of conflict on the other hand on the flip side of that coin we have prince Fyro, who's been basically preparing to take the helm of the empire for quite a while now as the last remaining here heir to the dandelion dynasty within the islands of dara and um he has established himself essentially as a very strong military person. He um, he sets out on a he he he's part of the faction who the, who wants to just bring the war to the Liyuku, and he sets out to do exactly that. On the other side of the Wall of Storms, we have um, Princess Terra, who's essentially in a running battle across the the land, trying to recover from the losses that she suffered and to save the people that she's grown to accept as her people over these over these years um, and also potentially throw a wrench into the invasion for the, the secondary invasion force that's hoping to take advantage of the next gap in the wall of storms and um, those are honestly the main I would say the main POVs for this book so if I had to summarize this book in one word, I would say it's intense. Like I mentioned, this is essentially the second half of one book, so a lot of the climax, a lot of the payoff, a lot of the things that were just being built up to in the first book, they we see them play out here. We see them come to a head here. We see things that didn't seem to make sense or felt like completely relevant in the Veil Throne. We see the repercussions of them in this book. And... It's epic fancy like nothing I've read before, to be honest. Like, it can, it can, throughout this entire series, Ken Liu has created a richly detailed world. Like, very finely detailed world. And he's done it, he, he's played it, he's played it out over the course of these pages in a very creative and a very interesting way. And no more so than in this book. Like, this, 
fancy it tends to a lot of fancy world building tends to be very general very um you don't delve into the specifics you don't delve into like the systems the machinations the day-to-day -day of how this world works ken liu does that and in this book more than anything we see that kind of play out like we see we see how the development of technology the progression of society the progression of civilization has kind of led us to the point where we are now and it's just brilliantly done like more so than any other book this i think this is the book with the richest with the richest bits of world building in it um obviously we have three very intense um we have three very very intense povs with the three that i described like princess terra she uh, she goes through some pretty radical stuff over the course of these over the last two books and in this book she has to me she she goes through some even more intense some very intense personal situations um both as a mother and as a leader and as someone who is essentially trying to make the best of a situation that she didn't really plan to be in to be in um like she i, I would i would say of the three of them she probably had the most human story um so that made for very interesting reading at times but at the same time given the scale of this book like as fun as it was it wasn't it was like okay let's get to the more interesting stuff um with empress Gia, a lot of the chickens that she's been keeping over the course of this series come home to roost like she's had to um like her grip on power that she's maintained well past the point that she should some of her deeds in the past and in addition to that some of the plans that she set into motion to deal with the situation because she also has her own her own feelings on how the uh, on what should happen after the 10 year truce is done and in her case we don't know what that what, what her plans are we just know she's up to something and when those plans begin to hatch it's just brilliant it, it's just it blew my mind it blew my mind because it's so read and find out <laughs> like i i think more than anything her scheming was the was was the part that i really enjoyed over the course of this book and then we have prince Fyro, who he's very much of the whole military strongman um trope and he his sequences over the course of this book are some of the more interesting sequences some of the more action-packed sequences because he not only goes to war against the Liuku, but he goes to war against read and find out um but yeah overall brilliant wrap up to what's been a brilliant series like can Liu just continue he continued to just keep raising the bar on this series like when i think back on where the dandelion dynasty started to where it ended like this is just an epic series epic so somehow it I, I i can't think of any other epic fantasy series that does in four books what can use done here typically a lot of the kind of progression and the themes and the concepts that authors will span over tons and tons of books can you somehow manage to compress them down into four volumes albeit four very fat volumes and we just have this richly created world that i think is, is it's very unforgettable and it is going to stand out forever as one of the more iconic series within the genre like now having read it i um the more i think on it like the more there there is to just love and enjoy about this series i it it's not without its flaws but it's so ambitious and so creative in its scope and what it sets out to do that it works it works it, it's it's been an experience to say the least like these characters i i know these characters are, are for me they're unforgettable characters 
this world is unforgettable. A lot of the things in this in these books are unforgettable. They're going to stick with me for a very long time. And I will not be remotely surprised if as more time goes by, like this book just continues to unpack and unfold in my mind and I keep thinking back on a lot of the things that occurred over the course of this series. And um and it just grows in my mind to become one of those epic fantasy series that is pretty much in my top ten, if not my top five. Um Yeah, and I think that's pretty much all I can say about speaking bones. It's for me it was a good it was it was a brilliant finale towards being an absolutely brilliant series. Um and it's a must read for any fan of fantasy, any fan of epic fantasy in particular. Believe the hype, in short. Like, th this book is hype for a reason. Th this series is hype for a reason. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about Speaking Bones. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.